So, I mean, we'll gain some time because my discussion, my part, will be very short because it's so obvious. Of course we need adjuvant uh, oxaloplatin in rectal cancer, and I'll show you why. So does adjuvant chemotherapy work at all? And actually, this was something that came up uh, earlier today, and there was this one study which I hear being cited over and over and over again, the Lancet, the ERTC 22921 study, which was famously published, I mean, repeatedly, actually, in high-end journal, and uh, Lancet and New England Journal and, and uh, Lancet Oncology here, which dates back about now 20 years, you know, in terms of uh, the, the study when the study was conducted, an adjuvant study or a perioperative study in a complex malignancy as rectal cancer, randomizing, I mean, 1,000 patients sounds great, but when you break it down in two by two design, you have 250 patients per arm Compare that to the mosaic study, which gave us Falfox in the adjuvant setting, which was a 2,260 patient study. This is what adjuvant studies actually need to look like, and we'll see more adjuvant studies later. So 250 patients per arm is merely small. So, and the conclusions are shocking. Conclusions are shocking. This paper, which just came out last year, adjuvant fluorouracil based chemotherapy after preoptive radiation or with or without chemotherapy does not affect disease free survival or overall survival. So, why would you ever do that? So, there are some people who actually really thought this was great and you know, looked at this data here, data set, and if you really want to, you can see actually these curves do split but it's not statistically significant because of the small sample size. Now, when you dive a little bit deeper into the paper in this latest publication in particular, you actually see that there are a lot of flaws. Number one, okay, this was a trial which accrued over 10 years with a two-by-two -two design. We talked about the numbers of patients. These, in 1993, in the 1990s, we have no idea, and they have no data how these tumors were assessed how the stage was assessed. We have no idea about pre-treatment lymph node involvement. This was not recorded. You have post-treatment lymph node involvement, depending on what you do, whether you use radiation or radiochemotherapy, somewhere between 21 to 37 percent. So it could very well be that the majority, vast majority of these patients actually were stage two tumors, who then received four cycles post-op of an abbreviated dose-reduced Mayo Clinic regimen. And you all know that, if I, coming from Mayo Clinic, I can tell you Mayo Clinic regimen is the worst regimen ever invented. So this is something you should not consider a standard of care for our current treatment approach. And with this abbreviated dose-reduced chemotherapy, which is clearly no longer standard of care, less than 43% of patients receive the planned dose. So does this have any bearing on the, can this really be correlated with the, out with the statement, shocking statement, there is no benefit from post-operative chemotherapy? Clearly not. This is absolutely misleading. I actually worried and, and wondered why it was published so prominently, repeatedly. Now, we know that preoperative oxaloplatin in combination with radiation therapy does not work. I know that Jolene later will talk a little bit more about updates in rectal cancer. We have various clinical studies. Four out of five studies didn't show any benefit, not even in early response data like uh, pathologic CRE. What really changed were the only good prospective study, which I think really addressed the issue of Falfox versus five. If you do we need oxaloplatin, is the so-called ADORE study which was presented last year at ASCO, which is an admittedly relatively small study of about 300 patients. But if you see the right, the expected trend, and this trend is in line with the colon cancer data, which I'll come back to in a minute, then you see that this is actually relevant. You see disease-free survival. Falfox is superior to 5 helicovorin You break it down by stage 3 or stage 2, as expected. More benefit in stage 3, less benefit in stage 2. Very similar what we expected from colon cancer studies. And then you have an adjuvant rectal cancer trial data. This, these were perioperative trials here, the AO and the PETOC trial, ADORE, and these are the colon cancer trials that you're familiar with, CO8, uh, CO7 and the mosaic study. You see the hazard ratio benefit with one outlier, again, four out of five studies, exactly the same benefit for rectal cancer, adjuvant, Falfox as for colon cancer. I think this is really settled. And you know, when you look at the overall perspective guidelines, 
adjuvant therapy in rectal cancer should be guided by the same principles as colon cancer. Actually, the intergroup years ago divided their studies, the adjuvant studies, into rectal cancer studies, failed the, uh, the ECOG study, which was large, and no one, everyone followed the lead of colon cancer, and as an intergroup, as a cooperative group, we made the decision not to separate adjuvant studies out anymore in between rectal and colon cancer, because we believed the risk of systemic recurrence which we try to address with systemic chemotherapy afterwards, is really very similar between rectal and colon cancers with some difference in metastatic uh, spread. Um, but we know that rectal cancer and colon cancers are more similar than dissimilar, also supported by, in biology by the uh, Cancer Genome Atlas uh, Network analysis. You know, it's probably left and right colon are probably more different than colon and rectal cancer, so I think that's important. Um, so in the end, I, in my clinical practice, I think this is something that a lot of people do. We really approach adjuvant rectal cancer, like adjuvant colon cancer. When you would use oxaplatin in any stage colon cancer, use the same pre-treatment stage assessed, you know, in, in, in rectal cancer. These are kind of going back to the idea that colon and rectal cancer were tested genetically, the uh, uh, Cancer Genome Atlas Project, as I mentioned. Now, if you didn't believe me that, you know, you should use oxaplatin as adjuvant therapy, you can actually look at the NCCN guidelines, which actually strongly state, this is the latest edition, Falfox, Kbox, or Flox, but Falfox and Kbox are preferred in these, believe me, that's T3, T4, any, uh, T, uh, N1 or N2, um, so in these uh, cancers, pre-treatment, the assess, uh, pre, uh, uh, radiation therapy stage, those patients should receive adjuvant Falfox. And who wrote this? Who wrote this? It is Dr. Vinuk. So it is very easy to see. He is not only the vice chair of the rectal cancer committee of NCCN, but also member of the writing committee. So he wrote this guideline. So I think I'll consider my case closed and I'll give you a chance to defend your hopeless position. 